Well, here we are, still physically apart from each other, still wondering when. When will this end? What will it look like? How much longer will we be not able to gather together in worship? What have I done with my time? I can imagine you've had similar questions and probably a whole lot more. Some of us have been struggling. Some of us have enjoyed the time of peace and quiet. Some of us have experienced both the struggle and the rest at different times. Some of us have done more jigsaws in the last six weeks than in the last six years. But one thing is for sure, the world is in a mess right now. And we're very much part of that mess. Sure, we very much believe that God is in the mess with us. But some of us will have been searching and wondering, what is it that God wants us to learn and discover in these days? A couple of weeks ago, I read a blog by a colleague. A blog is a piece of writing, someone's thoughts that they share via the internet usually, about what is happening for them at that particular time. And they can sometimes be open and honest and raw. Here are some of the thoughts from that blog. We've had lots more time to think and ponder life, and I truly do wonder if anything will change for us in the long term. Will life just fall back into the ruts we were living and functioning in? Many of us may have questioned, where is God in all of this? We have prayed and joined with others for God to stop this, but up till now, nothing. So what is he wanting from us? We can hardly argue that we're still in a seriously dangerous situation at all levels, physically, spiritually and financially. We may have more months of this yet, so what will you do with your life? Will you crumble or cruise? Will you rise up and be revived or will you allow yourself to slip back into a rut of whatever? This person went on to talk about being an influencer and says, I will try and be an influencer to those around me to crank up their Christian walk. It is primarily who we are and it must be challenged and encouraged and modelled at all levels. And that must become before anything else. It must never be assumed that this will happen on its own. Spiritual inf influence is what is needed. I believe that what God is asking us to be is an influence for him with a strong spiritual mindset. Jesus is coming again, no doubt about it. And if the world has never seen anything like this, well, we must get the world ready for Jesus. Now, you don't have to agree with the blogger's statements. We need to remember it's their thoughts. But that particular morning, I read these words and it really got me thinking. Add to that, last week, Amanda reminded us about Jesus reinstalling Peter as the rock of his church and reminded him and the other disciples to follow him. And it hit me as I read that block on Saturday morning, as I sat in the comfort of my own home, am I an influencer for Jesus? How can I be an influencer for Jesus in these times of social isolation? Along with what, when will this end and what will it look like, my thoughts have been churning over these two questions. The very next day after reading the above blog, I was reading in my quiet time, and that's been so helpful in these days, um, to read scripture. I belong, began in Matthew and I'm following a Bible commentary, so I'm learning a lot as I go, even if it's a little bit slow. But that next morning I read scripture, I read the scripture that was presented for us this morning about being salt and light and being a city on a hill. Essentially being an influencer. And I was immensely challenged on how or what am I doing in these days to be an influencer when I can hardly get out of my front door, let alone see many people. And what will I look like to others on the other side of this social isolation. And I'm not referring to needing a haircut. How will I have grown as a disciple in these unprecedented days? I'm probably not sure, will not share anything absolutely mind blowing this morning. Much of what has come from these thoughts and scripture is not new, but hopefully it comes anew this morning. It will remind us that we are influencers and that will give us purpose on both the quiet days 
and on the days that we might struggle. Because our identity is in Christ, it implies influence for Christ. Jesus says in this passage, you are the salt, you are the light. We need to note that he did not say you could be or what if you were. He distinctly says you are. And I think that particular morning I read those words, that came to me strongly. If I am salt and if I am light, what do I look like? And metaphorically speaking, what do I taste like? If as Christians we must permeate society as agents of redemption and change, if Jesus says this to us as individuals and as a church, follow me, remembering his last words were, go make disciples, what does salt and light look like for us, especially in these days? Salt, a preservative, a seasoning, a preventative, an effective and powerful element in achieving chemical balance in physiology. You've heard of the saying, not worth their salt. It comes from way back when, way back when, Roman soldiers were often paid in salt. It was both a valuable and a scarce commodity. Our word for salary comes from the Latin words salarium, referring to these payments made to the soldiers with salt. The Greeks called salt divine for its properties. Salt is also an antiseptic. It is used for flavour. It is white, usually, symbolising purity, being one of the most natural white substances in nature. It also causes people, if used in great quantities, to become thirsty. Jesus says, if salt loses its saltiness, it is useless. The only thing it is good for is throwing out. Salt actually can't lose its saltiness as such. The only way it becomes less salty is by becoming so impure and so mixed up with other elements that it loses its function. I'm sure you can draw the human conclusion to that definition. If we become so mixed up with things that are not what God wills of us, are not part of his mission to the world, we become so ineffective that we have lost any saltiness or influence that we may have been. Matthew's tradition and cultural context towards saltiness includes sacrifice, loyalty and covenant finality, if you like, devotion. These words serve as a warning that if the disciples, and by de definition us too, lose any saltiness, influence, then we too will be thrown out as useless. The useless salt was literally thrown on the roadway and trampled by men passing by, rendering it even more useless. Light. The metaphor here, because as Jesus teaches us, he is the light of the world, is an illumination for the world. The function then is not so much to be seen, but to let things be seen as they are. As I thought about this, there's an illustration I've heard and seen a number of times that the cracks of our lives, our wounds, our pain are places where Jesus' light can shine through. Sometimes it's through our cracks and our broken places God's light shines through the brightest. Or this one, God uses cracked pots. We are God's cracked pots. As a city on a hill, in contrast to the light that shines out from within, a city on a hill is inevitably and unavoidably seen. Just a few nights ago, I was cleaning my teeth to go to bed. It was about 11 o'clock and a power outage hit us, pitch black. Couldn't see a thing. The whole street in total darkness, not even a skerrick of a moon. Once we found a torch, we took a look outside our front door and on a hill in front of us we saw lights, bright lights, unmistakable lights. Normally these lights are hard to see in the light of our street lights, but in the dark, unmistakable, 
distinctive and clearly seen lights on a hill. That's who, what we need to be for our community in these days of social isolation. And in these days, there is a chance for us to go stronger in faith, deeper in relationship, more time for prayer, contemplation, scripture, listening so that when we emerge, we have not lost anything, but actually gained so much more than we can imagine. We're called into active mission to let our little light shine. And yep, I bet you just burst into song. But we cannot generate that light any more than salt can generate its own saltiness. These pictures of light, salt and city on a hill are pictures of the church as having been lit. We are the recipients of a light from which God is the source. Hence, you are salt. You are light. We are salt and light for the sake of the world that we live in. We're not challenged to try harder. We can't be saltier or lighter. But as followers of Jesus, we are salt. We are light. The text calls us to believe Jesus' word and to accept and live out the new reality created when we were called as disciples. Jesus' message at that time was radical. Matthew puts it in such a way that he tells us, encourages us to be radical for Jesus, to be influencers. It's not about words but about a lifestyle that from within reflects outwards the light of Jesus. We make people so salty that they are thirsty for Jesus. I'm working on being an influencer. Sometimes I get it right. Well, maybe I get it okay sometimes. Sometimes I don't much so get it right. But I think the greatest thing is that I'm working on it. How about you? When things get difficult as they are at the moment, when we are being kept from our regular worship together, when things are not at all as we expect, when things bring us to a place that is difficult, when we don't understand what is happening all around us or when it will stop, when we still want to be an influencer for him, there is only one place to go. And I invite you to bow the knee.